Uh, welcome back to Taxil Insiders. Um, I'm Brian Seidensticker, CEO of Taxil Resources. And uh, with us today, I was lucky enough to snag uh, Stephen Morrell with uh, Juristeed. Uh, Stephen, welcome. Thanks for having me back on. I appreciate it. <laughs> so um, I guess, Stephen, last time we spoke, we, we really went into a lot of detail on the process of, of tax sales in, in Louisiana, the history of, of how uh, you know, tax sale process got to where it is today. And there was a lot of of, of changes, uh, potential changes coming down the, the pipeline. So I wanted to circle back with you and, and thanks for doing that just to give us an update of, of you know, what's happened you know, it, this year and, and what didn't happen that was expected and, and, and what do you anticipate to be coming down the, the pipeline in the future? Yeah, well, there's quite a bit that's that's in the pipeline, uh, as we've been talking about in in, uh, in past discussions. Uh, Louisiana, although the law, the system right now is working fairly well, um, and has been as um, running on a a comprehensive overhaul that was done in 2008, um, and has been which has been upheld by the um, all levels of the uh, Louisiana court system. Um, there, it's still a, a, a bit of confusion over what kind of system it is. Uh, and it still uses a lot of the archaic processes and things that are outdated and don't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, and so this is an attempt to finish the job, essentially, of what was done in 28, 2008 was purely statutory, didn't involve the state constitution, which is where some of the, 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 the principles of the tax sale system Louisiana employees are, are rooted um, and it's kind of hard to change, fundamentally change a statutory scheme of tax sales and not touch on where the source of that authority to, to have a scheme in the constitution exists. Um, they pretty much did that and uh, did a really good job of it because apparently the court said that it's, it, uh, it, it came out okay. Um, there, you know, there's no question one of the number one um, um, components that, that really defines the uh, uniqueness of Louisiana in not so much a great way, um, but also is telling of, of uh, an old, old archaic uh, element of, of Louisiana's tax sale system is the way that it, it conducts its bidding at its tax sale auctions. By bidding down the ownership percentage of the collateral in the event that the tax lien that's being sold at the tax sale never redeems and the certificate holder ultimately pursues a quiet title judgment, that is the percentage of ownership that they would be able to quiet. Um, it's You should be scratching your head right now if it's the first time you've heard that or if it's the 10th time you've heard that because, and, and, and everyone in Louisiana knows this. I mean, we know that it's bad. We know it is actually in the constitution, which is why it didn't get changed in 2008 and why it's been on the chopping block was really the first thing that was addressed in whenever this, this effort to, to uh, finish the job, as I, as I put it earlier, um, to um, bring Louisiana up to par where we want to be. Um, now, the, as far as the status of all of that, uh, I mean, there's quite a few other things we can talk about as far as what those changes are, but um, the uh, state has a, uh, Louisiana has a law institute that is, uh, I'm a, a privilege to be a member of, um, that uh, is a body of professionals, uh, attorneys, and, uh, and government officials, and uh, industry um, experts that, that are um, put together by the legislature to research fundamental changes of Louisiana law and present a, a approved version of this to the legislature in a particular session so that it helps the legislature to make an informed decision in a short amount of time. Um, we, this, there's a tax sale committee, and that's the one I, I, I sit on, um, that was formed quite a few years ago to do this. Um, it, now, these are all volunteers like myself. No, no, no one's paid on this committee. Um, and it's, you know, so we meet rant, you know, one, a few times a year, that kind of thing, and, and, and do the best we can uh, with, with very limited resources. But um, um, we've missed the boat a couple of times. Uh, there's, of course, there's deadlines with getting legislation into uh, the legislature to be considered for, uh, and especially when talking about a constitutional amendment, it's even more complicated. Um, you have to have a, a general election going on where there's a statewide public referendum on the ballot. Um, so it can't be every possible year. Uh, last year was slated to go, but of course, COVID uh, deferred lots of uh, bills and legislation, uh, legislative directives that uh, were not as essential is dealing with that problem. 
Um, as a fallout from that, we didn't really have any meetings <laughs> either. So uh, we weren't able to really advance the ball uh, very much. And so it really caused essentially a two-year delay, not just one-year delay. Um, that being said, I am very optimistic based upon uh, being on the committee that is creating the, the hopefully the body of what would be the revision um, that this will be in the next year's legislature for uh, to be passed, uh, to be voted on and passed. And I say passed, uh, not arrogantly, but the uh, typically the Law Institute's recommendations are rubber stamped because that's the whole reason why they set it up in the first place mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't have to debate this long, drawn out, researched, well-researched, by experts in the field, you know, who are the, uh, they to question that, but um, certainly they have the ability to chop it up and do whatever they want with it as, as the actual elected officials, but usually it's, 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 it flies through. Got it. So in, um, apologize if I uh, missed the, the changes, but so what's a, what's kind of a, uh, an overview of what those, they're suggested, right? It's not a guarantee or slam dunk, but what those suggested changes will be to that process. Well, it, we talk, we can start with the, the bidding for, um, you know, the bid down ownership uh, would, would uh, the prevailing um, uh, opinion right now is to go with a bid up premium uh, okay. uh, type of system. Um, that then, of course, the very next question that anyone who in the industry would ask is, what happens with the overbid? Um, and of course, there are two different schools of thought, two different systems that are out there, such as the difference between Mississippi and Alabama, where the overbid is either returned or retained uh, upon redemption. Um, and um, that's being debated right now. Um, okay. And uh, th there's a, there's a, a split uh, in, um, in what the policymakers believe or those sitting around our table believe. Uh, personally, I am of the opinion that it should be returned um, even if a portion of it sh should be retained to cover maybe particular costs or et cetera. But, uh, you know, if it's sitting in an interest bearing account, uh, there, there's, there's another, there's additional revenue there that could be uh, looked at as being, as compensating someone who might be holding the funds. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, my, my, the motivation I have for returning it, of course, is to attract uh, bidding competition and activity and interest in the state. This is, a investment, which sound, which, that, and of course that sounds great to investors, but if you're looking at this from a public policy perspective and looking out for the best interests of the state, there's nothing but good that comes with competition and increased bidding activity. And there's nothing in, in order to encourage that by giving the back the majority, if not all of the overbid upon a redemption um, it is, is common sense. Uh, you know, and especially if you can carve out a an equity protection for homeowners in states like Missouri, where if the home is actually taken and there's no redemption, um, there's no, you know, you have this overbid, but there's no need to give back to the investor because they have the property now, right? So now you have something that you can say, okay, well, maybe there was significant, maybe all lien holders have been satisfied and there's just this big pot of money here. Um, that's not a bad thing to happen for someone who just lost their home in foreclosure and is a good way for the industry to balance itself out between interests. So got it. Know, that's, that's my take on it. So bid method now changing that from the ownership to a bid up, like that's the leading candidate right now. Um, any other changes, um, as part of that legislative proposal? There would be a single method of, of, of a procedure for confirming an unredeemed tax lien um, to a, a deed. Okay. Uh, th there, there is not going to be common. There's, there's two today, right? In there's the two today. There's one. It, it's, a, it's a quiet title suit. There's also a non-judicial noticing procedure. Uh, there's technically a third one, but uh, that's, that's, it, it, no one really uses it called munitions. Um, but the, uh, th there would be a single process. You would either quiet your title or you would not. Um, there will also be a time limit imposed. There'll be, a, for the first time ever, there'll be a, a statute of limitations on your rights to exercise hmm. um, they, the conversion to a deed so that it doesn't sit out there forever. Uh, and so, and which is really smart too, because that, you know, you, 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 the whole idea here is to not just collect tax, but also to not create this inventory of abandoned property either that all of a sudden wasn't worth it to the investors. So they walked away from it. Um, you know, is to smartly make those decisions and then find find an out, find a, a, a disposition route that's that's advantageous for the, the for any situation. 
uh, and you want things to happen faster than, than, than later, sooner than later, right? So, so statute of limitation makes a lot of sense. In Louisiana, we call this a prescription period. Um, and, um, and so the, the single process would still be a judicial quiet title. Um, it, it, would, it, would not, it, would, it would no longer be the option to, to have confirmed title any other way. Um, without that judicial quiet title, you would continue to only have interests in the, in the, in the, I guess, as a lien, right? It would not be converted to a deed until you exactly. Would, so, okay, you would have a lien, and then the from the moment that it becomes mature enough to file your suit, eligible to become to to start that quiet title process, your statute of limitations time period would start ticking. Okay. So you would have, uh, you know, the idea is right now about five years uh, to make a decision. Are you going to sit on it and, and try to collect that, you know, and wait for, wait for a, a post-redemptive period uh, collection uh, without filing a suit or are you going to file a suit or are you going to lose your certificate? Okay. Um, that, those, are your, those are your choices. Now, uh, is, there, now, is there any, it's part of that, and I think that um, I'm not an attorney either, so um, I'm sure others probably have this question because I think there's a difference between judicial foreclosure and judicial quiet title. So the quiet title is what you're talking about. So there wouldn't be an additional, and um, I'll use Ohio as an example, they have a ju judicial foreclosure process that lien holders have to go through, which results in an actual sheriff sale, a secondary deed sale. Would Louisiana have that? as well or no okay no no this this is a a, a civil lawsuit this is okay. this is a a judicial involving the judiciary and the licensed attorney uh etc um so that's that that's the it's judicial quiet title and it's a good distinction that, that you bring up um so the that by itself doesn't always but you know without more to talk about doesn't sound immediately attractive because you think lawsuit cost time um oh man you know like that's not like you know people saw the non-judicial route as a way to speed things up and to reduce costs especially on properties that maybe didn't have the 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 collateral value to support spending so much cost as a as a judicial quiet title suit um so there are to mitigate that that concern or um that that a potential adverse effect, we have developed a number of things to make, to, to offset that, um, that negative, negative aspect of quiet titles with speeding it up, mm -hmm. having a streamlined procedure, having a prioritization of the suit in the, in the docket, um, having the ability to recover legal costs and attorney's fees. Um, you know, and, and, and of course the, all these things have, have, are detailed out, but suffice it to say that those things don't exist right now. Um, in the current quiet title uh, procedure articles in Louisiana, it's basically an ordinary lawsuit, no different than a traffic accident or anything else where you got to wait in line and there's no special, you know, reward. Uh, in this case, you know, there would be ways for you to recover your costs so that right there you're, you're talking about quiet title suits being too expensive, but now we've just given you a way to recover that if you file, you know, and so, and of course, if you end up with the property, um, this is, that's not the, that's not the, the, the goal of that, right? The goal, cause who's paying at that point. But the point of it is if there is a, uh, a redemption or a, a payback provision in this quiet title process, which there would be, um, they would be forced to pay back, not just the redemption, but also a certain degree of legal costs and fees that you've incurred to get to that point. Okay. As part of that judicial quiet title process, um, I know some states leave the door open quite a bit to the lien holder of structuring a, a, a deal, essentially with the prior owner or prior interested party of, I'm going to call it redeem, redeeming, right? Or, right. or paying that off. Is, is, that, is that process going to leave that door pretty open or is it going to be a all right, we're starting foreclosure and then that, you know, the dollar amount they have to come up with is going to change and they have a, an end date, they've got to come up with it. And that's really the only option or is the door open for, um, you know, really the lien holder to structure or something with the, um, the interested party, you know, outside of that box. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does make sense. Um, so the, the, this has been lo uh, quite a few debates, uh, or not just debates, but, but discussions on, on, is a better word, way to put it uh, on this very topic. What triggers the start of the redemption period and what is that redemption period? Because that really is, I mean, what, what a legal, a formal redemption period obviously is a set amount that, that, that calculates the, the redemption amount and it's managed or governed by 
uh, the government. And, and this is, you know, this is, it's, it's, it's at least overseen or, uh, or monitored by the governing official. And currently in Louisiana, it's, of course, it's a three-year redemption period, but for the most part. Um, and, uh, and within that three-year period, the redemptions are handled exclusively by the tax collector. You cannot redeem or pay off anything. It doesn't mean anything. It will not have no legal effect if you do any kind of payment exchange outside of the tax collector. And the amount is, this is exactly the same, no matter where you go and whatever, what any, any parish in the state, um, it's, it's just a set calculation. So, um, so it, it's important to define what that redemption period is. Um, and, and of course, what does it mean if it passes? Whatever it means if you're outside the redemption period now, but you haven't foreclosed yet, or you haven't got your quiet title yet. Mm -hmm. um, and again, right, the difference right now is that if you've passed up that redemption period, but you don't have a quiet title yet, your, your, your options as the tax debtor or someone on their behalf is limited to challenging the, the legitimacy of the tax sale rather than to pay it off. Um, a lot of times that the, the, the exchange between that, that fight ends up becoming something similar to a payoff, but it's not guaranteed. It's not protected by the tax collector or anything rigid. So, so it, it can go either way. Um, and of course, to have leverage to, to even have that kind of uh, cooperation from your from your tax investor, there should be something wrong with the tax sale, right? Which is getting <laughs> which is getting um, less and less frequent uh, as as the the maturation of the 2008 uh, statutory revision has, has taken foothold in Louisiana, and it's been approved by the courts. It's really allowed more compliant tax sales to be more more, more of the commonplace. Uh, more legally compliant tax sales and um, and easier to cure them. So it used to be where if you if you this, the tax collector skipped or missed one little step before the tax lien auction, you're done. You're out. You're you're, you're you know your whole case is blown out of the water and right. could never be remedied. Right now, it doesn't matter what happened before the tax lien sale that the investor can step in at, at almost any point in time before you've initiated some kind of formal foreclosure proceeding and and correct whatever deficiency there may have existed. And can and keep moving forward. So it made it easier to to to, to uh, it, it sort of like reduce the, the chances that you can assert a and prevail on a annulment uh, or to set aside a tax sale because of a, a, def a deficiency in the process. Got it. Got it. So um, it sounds like quite a few changes to better the process, right? Make it much more straightforward, known, uh, understandable. And I know uh, I'm talking to investors throughout the industry of. Of typically there's this like, I'd say mist or uh, fog around Louisiana and like, what is the real process? So this will help, you know, clarify all that. What, as far as timeline goes, since it's on hold or was on hold uh, due to COVID, what um, right now, what would be the timeline of hopefully getting that passed? When would it be rolled out? Like when would it take the effect um, as of today? If it falls in the, the current expected timeline, it would be in the uh, 2022 legislature. Um, so that would be next spring, uh, where it could become uh, voted and in, in, in passed by the legislature, signed by the governor. Now, of course, that would be things that are involved that are, are tied to a constitutional amendment um, are typically have will have a deferred effective date, and it would be a contingent effectiveness period uh, on the passage of that co that corresponding constitutional amendment, which of course is not guaranteed and not tied to anything the legislature or the governor did. Um, so, um, you know, that's probably the biggest X factor in anything that uh, is, it, it might make perfect sense and, 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 you know, no one might actually argue with you, but it might still lose at the ballot box because people right. just don't understand, you know, how that works. So, um, but there's, of course, there's, there's, you know, tactics and strategies of how, of how to make sure to mitigate or reduce the chances of that failing for no good reason. Um, but uh, to answer your direct question, though, it, the soonest it could happen would, would be taking effect uh, 1 1 23, uh, which yeah. sounds crazy to talk about 2023, but it's really not that far away. No. Um, but if you understand the, the process of passing laws and, and constitutional amendments, you know that that's, that sounds pretty much as about as fast as it can possibly happen as of the time we're talking right now. Right, right. And I'm, I'm assuming everything that's, um, there'll be provisions that everything that the process that was in place prior to whenever that's instituted, you know, that will continue for whatever liens were sold prior to that, let's say one one twenty three implementation, right? The redemption period on those, the processes you could follow, all of that would kind of be grandfathered in until all that clears itself out. 
Is that accurate? Yeah, I, if you could see me right now, you'd see that I'm smiling because uh, the, the conversation about retroactivity uh, of laws is, is, is always a, a hot topic uh, mm -hmm. in, with uh, attorneys and legislators and anyone deciding to change something. Uh, substantially, it's been in effect for a while. Um, and th this was no, quite, no, no, no difference, um, no exception rather. Um, the most likely it will not be retroactive and it will, the, the new law will actually carve out, um, specifically say that, you know, it, it, if the, the year of the tax sale is 2022 or earlier, um, it, you have the option of, of exercising this new procedure to quiet title or any of the, of the existing ones, um, that, you know, before it, um, but of course, the there, there's it, it's irrelevant as far as the bidding at auctions because that's a real time event and that's that it'll take effect for the auctions that begin in that that calendar year. Um, so there'll be some key components of it that that will not be retroactive, but the most part, it won't matter, right? right. Because you buy a tax lien uh, in 2023, you're going to be participating under the new auction rules of bidding up premium, um, and uh, you'll be able to start quieting title. Uh, under the new streamline singular procedure, uh, even for even for tax liens that existed prior to 2023, um, but the things that would terminate or limit your rights, like the prescription or the statute of limitations, would not be applicable until in in, until the, the the new liens that were sold in 2023. Got it. Got it. Now the so the last thing I want to just clarify for everyone, um, at least my understanding. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Stephen, but this all applies because we talked about ownership bid down, all that applies to the lien sales uh, that, that occur in Louisiana, right? So the, the deed sales, or uh, I'll say the county owned parcels that are auctioned through a deed process, this doesn't affect those in any way. This is just the lien auction process, correct? That's exactly correct. So the, the we're not talking about, you know, in, in Louisiana, um, it, it's, and I spend a lot of time, of course, talking about that in the recent white paper that I, that I, uh, put together um, and uh, is, I think, still available on your site and uh, on jurisd.com as well um, for a free download. But the, the one of the key uh, themes in that white paper was the 2008 revision made it very, very clear. And again, this has been set well settled at this point that Louisiana tax sales sell a tax lien, period. End of story. Um, uh, it's not a deed. It doesn't matter what anybody else is telling you. It's, it's, it's a lien. Um, and it's treated that way. And um, the, the difference is that it's a redeemable uh, situation still because it's not tied to a secondary for, a judicial foreclosure process, like you mentioned, like in New York or Florida. But it, but, it, but it has certain rights to it. If it doesn't redeem, it grants those rights exclusively to that certificate lien holder to, to, to opt into a process to convert it to a deed through a judicial quiet title. Um, so that's... You know that's the that's the the the, that's the short answer to your question. Okay, <laughs> all with the all of this with the giant caveat of none of this is um, finalized. Um, obviously, things change as you as you enter the legislative process, and and exceptions are made, changes are made last second. So we'll see kind of what the final bill looks like. But um, it sound, certainly sounds like uh, heading in the right direction, making it much more clear, uh, much more or much less fog or, or mist over the whole process in Louisiana, which is, which is awesome. Um, I guess, is there anything else, um, Stephen, from your end that you wanted uh, the audience to kind of be aware of? Well, some of the, what, one of the biggest things is going to be because the vast majority of tax liens redeem, right? Is, is that nothing's happening to the redemption rate of uh, the interest accumulation or the, or the 5% penalty. So uh, Louisiana has always been very competitive. If you look at just that one line item, as far as the components of a tax sale system right. is the, the, the interest, the interest rate and the, the, the potential return on what you purchased at the tax sale has never been in dispute. It's been this crazy build down ownership thing. And, and, you know, how do you deal with that? And of course there's been people who have come up with their own systems and have learned to deal with it. Um, but in addition to having all of the improvements to the, the bad parts, nothing is changing with the existing good parts. So it's going to be a combination of having good, good, as opposed to that good and bad uh, as major elements of this tax system. Hopefully that'll, that'll put, uh, this probably doesn't, doesn't uh, 
that doesn't sit well with some of, some of the investors who are currently investing in Louisiana because it's inviting competition. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I'm advocating for the state of Louisiana and what's best for the state is to have competition as much as possible. And as long as there's also a good way to harness that competition in a productive way, as I was mentioning to, to you before with, you know, having that bid up premium, that overbid, um, that overbid uh, procedure that could benefit both the, the state, the, the, the investor and the homeowner all at the same time. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Stephen, I appreciate your time once again. Thanks for the update. Um, sounds like we'll, we'll need to touch base again later this year or next year just to see where everything's at and see if anything else uh, pops up. Yeah, we definitely will. And I'm happy to do it anytime. All right. Thanks, Stephen. All right. Take care.